so most recently I was listening to Jobin Chavez uh, he's a minister out of Las Vegas he posed a question he said when is the last time you've walked on water and that was in reference to Matthew 14 verses 22 to 31 where it was a, it was a storm and the disciples were in the boat and they were terrified and they saw something coming towards them that looked like um they thought it was a ghost and so Peter like you know hold on God if this is you you know tell me to come walk on water so God like come you know come and walk you know come on come on across the water and so Peter was walking on water but the minute he took his focus off of Jesus he began to sink he started focusing more on the wind what was coming against him as opposed to focusing on God Jesus was like if you fo- like if you focus on me you I'm like you can you can do the impossible you can do what you know you're not capable of doing right um but allowing that focus like taking that focus and putting it on the storm that's where you you know that's where you begin to sink again so um from that I was just like the battle was not yours it's God's the, and it's already won and let me tell y'all where all of this came from so Genesis 315 I was um you know just getting all of this through Genesis 315 says I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. That um, that scripture is in reference to when the serpent was in the Garden of Eden and um, God was giving him the punishment for it, for tempting Eve. Um, so he's telling um, the serpent like, I'm going to put hostility between you and Eve, um, you and the woman, and your seed will strike her heel, but her seed will strike you, strike your head. Nah, what do y'all think is doing the most damage? Is it hitting somebody in the head or the heel of their foot? When I was young, my auntie used to tell me um, to always when it was, you know, when she she was trying to teach me how to fight. And she was like, if you're if you're up against like, you know, a, a multitude of people, you find you one and you if you hit him in the head, you hit him in the face, most importantly, the nose. But if you hit him there, like you got him like you got them down. Right. And so. That's because. We can take body shots all day, but when you hit somebody in the face, like our faces are sensitive. Um, what's above the neck is what's making the rest of the body function. So if your head space is off, it doesn't matter the condition of everything else in your body. Um, you know, so like, like, cause once you you get into that head, or you hit something and you you shake up something that's in that person's head, you get you get their head off then everything else is not fun like the brain your head space is is controlling the rest of your body like telling it what to do how to operate etc um so if the enemy comes against you the most he can do is strike strike your heel you can keep hitting him over the head but the most he can do is strike your head if he gets enough head shots he done for right um, you might end up with a limp from your heel being struck, but as long as your head is still in the right place, you can keep it going. The serpent's brain is in his head, um, and he finna be done for if you keep hitting him over the head. You ain't gotta if you hit him hit him one real good time, you ain't gotta deal with him at all, okay? Um, but as children of God, we are equipped with supernatural power. Um, if y'all look back at our childhood, no matter what uh, superhero it was, they had this supernatural gift. But outside of that gift, they still had to battle with something. It was something that every single one of them were battling. They had this, this supreme gift that they stood out amongst the people surrounding them because they had a power that the, everybody else didn't have. 
but they still had some struggle. They still had to struggle with something. And then, so that took me to John 15 and 19. It says, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Uh, that's being child, children of God. Because you're not doing worldly things and operating like everybody else and trying to, um, you know, just, just the enemy, right, is jealous because we are God's children. He's, he's a hater, right? Uh, he's mad because he got thrown out of heaven and he want to be God. So he goes around trying to create children of his own by tricking us into replicating his way or using other people to distract us from our God given purpose. So he, he's always going to come for our heels. He's always looking for a way to kill, to steal and to destroy. And the Old Testament is a story of a man named Job, right? I don't know if y'all are familiar with the story of Job, but he was tempted by the devil. The devil had a bet with God that if God removed his shield of protection from him, um, that that Job would eventually curse God. But no matter what Job faced, he remembered not only who he was, but who God is. He pushed through and he was rewarded double for his trouble. In the New Testament, the devil also tempted Jesus. But Jesus not only knew who he was. But who God the Father was. There was no account of Jesus from um, ages 12 to 29. So for 17 whole years, nobody knows where he was or what he was doing. The Holy Spirit told me he was being equipped for his assignment. And I know that in the time period that God has taken um, to really develop me and and um, show me who I am. Um, when, I, when I get silent with God. Um, that he is building me up in that, in that, in that period of time during that time. So what I know about that time is that God strengthens you, equips you and develops you when you are taking that time to sit with him. So, you know, who you are, when the enemy come up against you, you you can be like, uh, uh, not only do I know who God is, but I know who I am. So there's nothing you can tell me about myself that I have not only have, not only do I not already know. But that uh, God knows and for even even in the areas where I have fallen short, I have already been forgiven for them. So you can't come and remind me of my past or remind me of where I fall short or where, you know, I still need some development at because I know those things. I know who I am. You know, you you know, you can't come and tell me who I am and try to make me feel weak because of it, because I'm already self-aware and I know who I am. And despite our weaknesses, despite where we fall short, despite where we start, we still need to be developed. That's where if we, we keep our focus on God, God, you know, covers all of all of where we fall short, all of where we become weak and strengthens that and develops us in that area. Um, so I've been studying the book of John. You know, just again, like I told y'all before, getting familiar with Jesus's character and getting to know uh, him to really, you know, see how he moved and everything. Um, And as I was reading, you know, it made me so sad because it showed it showed me that even God in a human body has human emotions Um, and that he that Jesus didn't really want to be even though he was even though Jesus was God, he didn't really want to be crucified. Uh, but Jesus knowing like this is the plan. The plan is the plan. I'm on a mission. I have an assignment. Um, like I have to execute on what we what we what we shared at our board meeting. What my assignment on this earth was going to be. I have to stay focused on that. Um, but I like in reading the book of John, I saw that. Um, You know, Jesus had some grief about doing it. You know, he had some grief about actually having to like, man, you know what? Wait, I got to get on the, I have to, (laughs) I got to die. Like I'm about to die. Um, So because that's because he knew even, even as God, he knew that being in a human body would make him feel that pain, both physically and emotionally. So even though Jesus is God, uh, the son of God, 
being a being and you know he he signed up for an assignment you know he he has an assignment he has a mission god wants him to do he came here to do a certain you know something very particular um that being god in the human body will make you you're gonna feel everything you're gonna you're gonna feel not well i believe god already feels stuff emotionally but since he's a spirit i don't believe that God, the spirit is feeling physical. You know, he doesn't feel what our human bodies would feel, you know, that, that hit, that, that, um, that damage, that pain being beat on, being, um, nailed into, you know, like the, those physical things that happen to us when, um, our bodies are being hit or damaged. And so, but Jesus was like, you know what? I got a plan. I'm doing like I have to do this. The sacrifice that he made for us as a whole. um, He made the sacrifice so we don't have to be the sacrifice. All we have to do is focus in on him. Right. And even when he had to even when he made a sacrifice and he was going through a terrible time, he kept his focus on God, kept his focus on the mission, kept his focus on the plan. And guess what? His reward was also great, right? So, Jesus is the sacrifice, not you. All you got to do is stay focused. Remember who you are. Remember what God told you. Remember the plan. The enemy will try to trick you into fighting back when the war is spiritual. So, if you try to fight a spiritual battle in the physical, you are going to lose. The way to fight spiritually is letting the peace of God come over you. Uh, I know for the last week, I have had to keep repeating to myself, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Your heart must not be troubled or fearful. That's John 14, 27. Because I started off, I had forgot for a minute that the the battle that I'm fighting is spiritual. And so when stuff started coming at me, I started... Stuff when stuff started coming at me in the physical, I began to respond in the physical. And God, like, wait, oh, who taught you that? <laughs> Real quick. Um, he like, you need to be slow to anger. Keep your cool. I got this. Um, but look here, Jessica, if you uh act like the world, although I love you, your consequence gonna be worldly too. So I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm gonna be good. Please forgive me. I I got off course for a minute. I forgot that my that not only do I not, I don't have to not not only do I not have to fight this battle, but also like all I have to do is keep my focus on you. But also knowing that the battle's not even physical. So what I'm dealing with is I'm looking at whatever it is that's coming at me in the physical, but the battle is is going on in, in the spiritual realm. And so when we try to respond to a spiritual situation in the physical, like we're, we're setting ourselves up for failure, get into the spiritual, you know, get into chiming in, focusing on God, remembering what he told you, remembering the assignment, because the battle has already been won. It has already been won. You just waiting for it to show up in the physical. God is already on the back end taking care of everything. Don't even worry about it. You my child. I fight your battles. I got you. And um most right right after like I started getting all this stuff and God was telling me all of this, he gave me Romans 8:18 8, and he said, "No pain can compare to the joy that is coming, that reward." So, even when it feels like, "Man, I'm taking hits." I'm taking like what's going on what you are dealing with currently in no way compares to the reward that's coming you see if you weren't uh living in a living in an abundance right because in John 10 10 Jesus said the enemy comes to steal to kill and to destroy I came so that you may have life and have it in abundance When you, you know, receive God and you are in relationship with Jesus and you receive the Holy Spirit, 
you are now living in abundance. It may you may not be able to see it, but spiritually, it's you know it's gonna catch up. Sometimes it takes sometimes it takes a minute for what's going on spiritually to catch up physically. But you're living an abundant life uh, when you're a child of God, right? And so the enemy wouldn't be bothering you or attacking you if you weren't a problem. If you weren't going to affect his plan, if everything in your life is going smooth and it's doing so good and you just can't, you know, there's absolutely nothing coming against you. You need to sit with yourself, <laughs> sit with yourself and um, ask yourself, hold on, you know, let, let me let me look at my life. Let me look at my decisions. What type of what type of decisions am, am I making? Because ain't nothing coming against me. Right. Um, you might be operating worldly. And the enemy is pleased with you, <laughs> not God. The enemy is pleased pleased with you, so he ain't gotta he not he ain't gotta do nothing to you because he know you are already doing his work. Um, but when you're not operating of this world and you are doing, you know, fulfilling your purpose and operating in God's will for your life, then the enemy is going to come because he know the plan. He, 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 know, he know what God has got, got going on and developing and doing in the spiritual. So he's going to try to come in like, oh, like I need to distract her, him or her this way. I need to cause this. I need to get in that person. I need to, 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 you know, try to get in their head or, you know, make stuff, you know, go on in their head or whatever it is. But in Genesis three and 15, it literally says the only power that God gives the enemy is to strike your heel. That's it. All he can do is strike your heel. So all you got is a little limp. That's it. That's all you got. So stay like, don't, don't give him, don't go, don't lay down in the floor <laughs> and, and give him power over you as a whole. No, uh, uh-uh. keep your focus on what God told you. What God is developing in you, God's plan for you, y'all partnership, and let's get it, okay? Stay focused. I'm, I, I can't say that enough. My grandfather used to give me speeches as a child all the time, say, stay focused, stay focused. And the, the older I, as I continue to, you know, grow in age and have uh, life situations happening, I would, you know, always hear his voice, stay focused, stay focused. You know, don't don't miss it. Keep keep your eyes on the prize. Stay focused because there's so many rewards there. All right. I love you all in real life.